Chapter 3, Why Ethics is Not Ice Cream. Take this flavor of frozen yogurt, or frozen gogurt. This is cool cotton candy. Contrast it with this flavor of frozen gogurt, strawberry banana blast, or burst. You might say that cool cotton candy is most delicious, and I might say that strawberry banana burst is most delicious. Would it be okay for us to disagree in this matter? Could we both be simultaneously correct? Well, we could. And that's because the thing that makes the flavor of ice cream more or less delicious, or the most delicious, or comparatively most delicious, is our experience of the ice cream. So if, if you eat this strawberry banana burst and you go, man, that's, that's much better than cool cotton candy, and it's in fact the best flavor I've ever had, you could say strawberry banana burst, is indeed the most delicious. And it would be okay for me to simultaneously say this cool cotton candy is actually the most delicious. And that's because what makes an ice cream or a flavor of most anything more or less delicious is its interaction with our personal taste buds. Deliciousness is a function of your personal experience. And so two people can simultaneously disagree and be simultaneously correct. Now take or contrast that with the question of what the shape of the earth is. We could vehemently disagree. I could say the earth is without a data, doubt 100% flat, completely flat, got good reason to believe it. You could say the earth is without a doubt, got good reason to believe it, spherical. Would it be okay for us to simultaneously disagree about the shape of the earth? When I say would it be okay, could we simultaneously be correct flat and spherical well as it turns out no we could not be simultaneously correct because the shape of the earth doesn't turn on our personal interaction with the earth itself instead the shape of the earth is determined by the actual state of affairs external to us it doesn't turn on the subject and so the earth is going to be either round or flat or spherical or oblong or whatever independent of what people happen to think. And there was a point in time when the majority of people believed the earth was flat, if not all the people believed the earth was flat. It didn't make it flat. And currently it's the case that most people, if not all people, believe the earth is spherical. That doesn't make it spherical. That's because the shape of the earth is an external fact, independent of our individual assessment, independent of a subject's observation. Contrast that, of course, again, with the flavor of ice cream. Ice cream, its deliciousness turns on a personal experience, and so people can be simultaneously, or they can simultaneously hold conflicting views. The shape of the earth, it's external to the subject. Now, the question is ethical questions, questions of what we morally ought to do. Are these more like ice cream, or are they more like the shape of the earth? Are they, are they questions that turn on our personal tastes, or do moral questions not depend on our subjective perspective, but... Are the answers to those, those questions somehow external to us? Here's a negative argument, an argument that criticizes a typical line of reasoning in favor of moral subjectivism. Sometimes people conclude that since it's the case that so many people have so many differing views about moral questions, about various social issues and such, and since we can't prove conclusively which person is correct and which person is not correct, which view is best, it must be the case that morality, that ethics is a matter of personal opinion, akin to which flavor of ice cream is most delicious. So that's, that's, those are the premises in the argument. It's the case that there's widespread disagreement. It's first premise, second premise is we can't conclu conclusively prove one way or the other. Therefore, the conclusion morality is a matter of personal opinion. Well, take, for example, the question of whether or not intelligent aliens exist beyond Earth or intelligent life exists beyond Earth. Here is a question that we can't conclusively prove one way or the other. And also a question over which there is disagreement. Disagreement among persons of equal intelligence with the same information. And so some astronomers, some scientists say, yes, we have good reason to think that intelligent life does exist beyond Earth. Other intelligent scientists with the same information, they conclude, no, we don't have good enough reason to conclude that aliens exist or intelligent alien life exists beyond Earth. Now, just because a person believes that aliens exist, does that bring them into existence? Of course not. Of 
course, our belief about aliens' existence doesn't have any bearing on whether they actually exist, just like our, our belief uh, of, the, of the shape of the Earth has no actual bearing on the actual shape of the Earth. Just because a person might say the aliens do not exist, would that make them pop out of existence? Of course not. Our mind state has no bearing on the existence of alien life, just like our mind states have no bearing on the, the shape of the Earth. So the point of this example is that just because people disagree over moral issues, and just because we can't conclusively prove one way or the other which person is right or which view is most correct, that by itself is not reason to think that morality is a matter of mere personal opinion. So that's the negative argument, shooting down that, that very common line of reasoning. A positive argument in favor of moral objectivism and against moral subjectivism is that the implications of moral subjectivism are uh, very much abhorrent and they're unacceptable, and therefore we should reject the view because everyone, every reasonable person would, would reject the implication. If you're a moral subjectivist and you believe that morality is a mere matter of personal opinion, then you would have to endorse any view whatsoever. And you couldn't criticize a person's view no matter how repugnant. So for example, if a person believed it was morally permissible to torture babies for pleasure, if, if they argue that it's, hey, it's completely fine to torture babies, not, not to prevent um, uh, terrorists from blowing up a sports stadium, not because you have to do it for the human race to survive, but just for fun. It's okay for fun. If a person were to argue that and you're a moral subjectivist, you'd have to say, I guess that's true for you. Just like it would perhaps be true that strawberry banana burst is the most delicious flavor of ice cream. But of course, if anything is, is morally wrong, it's tor that torturing uh, babies for pleasure is morally wrong. Uh, that's obvious, that's clear, that's something that is a bedrock moral intuition that we'll talk about in a later chapter. And uh, it's something we just can't accept. And so, um, unless you're willing to accept that it would be okay for a person to torture babies for pleasure if they sincerely believed it's okay, then you have to reject moral uh, relativism or moral subjectivism. Now, uh, a corollary of this or a very uh, similar line of argument is that, well, uh, perhaps it's the case that cultures determine what's morally permissible and what's morally correct. Well, the, it, that falls to the exact same objective, objection. So if it's the case that you think that whatever a culture believes is morally appropriate, is therefore morally appropriate, you could have an entire culture of people that believed it was okay to torture babies for pleasure. Um, and unless you're willing to accept that, you have to throw that out as well. So the conclusion isn't that we have all the answers to all moral questions, that, uh, that doing ethics is easy, that there's simply some source we can turn to and automatically the answers will pop out, all this stuff is clear. Um, that, that's not the, the conclusion whatsoever. The conclusion is simply that ethics is not like ice cream. It's not a mere matter of personal opinion, and we have very good reason to think that.